Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley. I'm an exercise physiologist and I'm here today to talk to you about fitness. What is fitness? Fitness is presenting in good health due to proper nutrition and physical exercise. And this is something that is lifelong. It is a journey. It is a lifestyle. All right, there's a lot of voices and a lot of influencers out there today that are trying to glamorize a unhealthy uh, physique in order to kind of change what fitness and what health looks like. And while self-acceptance isn't necessarily a bad thing, you know, there is reality and there's, there's not, okay? So these people that are promoting, for instance, obesity as being healthy, that is not accurate and that is not health, that is not healthy, okay? So we need to look at things um, realistically in order to achieve our goals. There are three different body types, okay? There's ectomorphs, endomorphs, and mesomorphs. There's certain body types that people are generally, um, you know, predisposed to being, and we kind of have to work around with that, okay? And there's different modes of exercise and different things we can do to shape the person that you want to be. Your goals may change or may not according to, or in light of that reality. Okay, so mesomorphs generally build muscle really easily. They're people that they can lift weights and they're gonna build a, a lean muscle structure and they generally have good muscle tone in, um, in their day-to-day -day life. Um, endomorphs are gonna be people that are generally um, gain fat tissue a little bit easier. These people uh, maybe were chubbier kids. Um, this isn't always applied to childhood, but these are people that you know gain weight, fat, pretty quickly. And then you have the ectomorphs. So ectomorphs are people that are generally leaner, people that are long and lean, um, think ballerinas and things like that. So you may identify or you may relate to one of those body types. Okay, so with that in mind, we want to figure out what kind of exercise can we do to become the best version of ourselves? Okay, so we're not trying to make something unhealthy healthy in order to, you know, make ourselves feel better we're functioning in the truth of the situation, okay? So if you tend to gain more fat easily, you know that you need to probably cut back on fats, okay? Um, if you tend to be leaner and it's hard for you to, to gain weight, maybe you need a little bit more fat in your diet. So just having that as a reality, okay? And how do we know um, if our body is fit, okay? So we're looking at fat percentage, body fat percentage, and muscle percentage in the body. There's BMI calculators and different things like that. They're not always going to be accurate because they're not taking into account the body composition of a person. Okay, there's different scans you can do, DEXA scans, you can do um, bioelectrical impedance. If you've ever seen at the gym, they have those little handheld uh, things there. You know, they're somewhat accurate, but not very. Um, but there's different ways to measure body fat percentage. We can also pinch the skin with skin calipers to see. Um, and then just in general, as we exercise, you'll notice your skin start to tone. Okay, so there's the obvious. And then there's the scientific way of looking into what is actually being converted here. How much of my fat is being converted to muscle? Okay. Um, and my body type is probably more ectomorph, so I generally am long and lean, and I was like that when I was a child as well. Um, and it's kind of hard for me to build muscle, so you know, I don't overload my body with weight. I do weight training, but I focus more on what I'm good at and what I enjoy. I enjoy running. Um, and again, I'm not a marathon runner. People ask me, are you a marathon runner? I'm not into that because I want to exercise my entire life. And I'm just using me as an example, but I want to exercise my entire life. So I want to keep my knees good. And I've talked to many people that run marathons. And this isn't everyone, but a lot of older people will say that they regret that they did that even though they enjoyed the experiences because it prevented them from uh, continuing that or continuing exercise for their whole life because of the pain or injury or things like that. So I'm all about like looking at it from a holistic approach. So, you know, what are you naturally inclined due to your body type? And also what are your goals? So, you know, if I wanted to be building massive amounts of muscle and that was my flow, that was in tune with like who I was as a person, I would definitely go after that. But I've kind of just accepted the person that I am. It's taken time. And then I try to make 
again, I'm using myself as an example. I'm not perfect and I'm not saying that I'm, you know, in charge of all this information. I'm just giving it to you so you can do with it what you will. But basically, you know, I've decided that I want to be the best version of myself. What do I enjoy? You know, I don't enjoy lifting muscle to the point where my face is completely red. I am uncomfortable. I feel, I get super hungry. Like, I, I just don't enjoy that and I won't look forward to it. I actually will dread it um, and I won't, I won't adhere to that type of exercise. So I do strength training. I do moderate strength training. I do more endurance training. So that goes into strength and endurance training. <clears throat> so I want to talk to you guys about, and I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, what's the best type of exercise? Should I lift heavier? Should I lift lighter? Should I do more repetitions? Should I do less repetitions? First of all, you shouldn't overthink it, okay? If you're moving, movement is going to be the best thing, okay? So if you're trying to create a structured exercise program for yourself in the gym, there's no limit to what you can find out there, right? There's images, there's videos, there's pictures, there's everything we need nowadays. But for the specific goal that you have, basically, if you want to train for long, lean muscles, you want to do endurance training. Endurance training is light to moderate weight, and you're going to do higher repetitions. For example, you may lift, for me, my body type, I would lift 10 to 12 pounds, and I could do up to 15 repetitions. If I'm going to do bicep curls, and I'm going to lift 15 pounds, on the last one, I'm not going to be able to do any more, probably at six to eight repetitions. And over time, we would obviously get stronger and we'd be able to lift more weight. Um, but again, it goes based on what your goals are. Okay, and, I, and the jerking movements and power training and different things like that, you want to make sure that you know what you're doing, that you're possibly being trained by someone, you know, a lot of CrossFit gyms or you know, people love CrossFit. I'm not downing CrossFit, but there's a lot of movements that people could potentially get hurt if they're not being coached properly. So just be aware of that. Another thing is you don't always have to do what your coaches or your trainers tell you to do. If you feel uncomfortable with, with, some, with what someone's telling you to do, tell them, I don't want to do that. I don't like it. I'm feeling pain. Let them know. And if they're not asking you or they're making you feel bad about even mentioning it, then that's not someone you need to be working with. Okay. Um, so um, we want to convert uh, fat to muscle, and that's not always going to be obvious. Like for me, you know, I noticed um, when I work on my legs, my thighs will feel tighter. I'll feel like, you know, the inside part is not rubbing together as much. So there's like the observational differences. And then, you know, you can get different scans. Um, there's different uh, modalities in order to like factually calculate those things and um, track them over time. And you can look all that stuff, stuff up online if you'd like, or if you have any questions, you can always let me know. All right, so um, again, so on the opposite side of the spectrum, so we have people that are pushing this obese lifestyle as being healthy, okay? Body acceptance, fine, whatever. But what is really happening on the inside of that, that person, that being, right? So if someone is carrying a lot of extra body fat around, especially around the midsection, really all over the body, you're probably, or someone's probably going to be experiencing diabetes of some sort or high blood sugar, possibly high cholesterol. Um, they're also putting stress on their joints because it's a lot of extra weight sometimes. So, you know, it's really nice to say, okay, we're accepting this or whatever, but you know, if your kid was touching a hot stove, would you just say, oh, I'm accepting this is what he wants to do. Or would you tell him don't do that because it's not healthy or it's not gonna help you, it's gonna hurt you. Okay, so this is something we're missing in society today is that a loving, just this is not good for you um, suggestion or or just someone stepping up and saying, you know, I want to guide you to what can really help you because I care about you. And I, that's, you know, partially wanted to, why I wanted to start my channel here is because I want to, I've been wanting to see, you know, the things that I'm, I'm going to be saying and what I have been saying. And again, it's not because I'm the greatest thing ever. It's just because I feel that I have a voice, you know, and I want to help people and I want to see people well and thrive and, you know, in, in just a, such a pure way, you know, and that's my heart. And I hope you always hear that, <laughs> that it's not judgmental. And I'm, I try not to be uh, judgmental. Okay. So another thing is um, people that are super fit too. So you'll see like the opposite side of the spectrum people that have these unattainable bodies that are just some people are naturally mesomorphs they're naturally going to be more fit have more muscle whatever 
but some people you'll see online are going through really great lengths and I won't mention names of people. It's just that they are starving themselves. They're doing extreme ketogenic diets, which are not healthy in the long term. You can look this stuff up, guys. You can look up this research. Okay, I'm just an exercise physiologist here just to give you the information. Um, and they're presenting themselves as this person when maybe their internal environment is not all that healthy. The other thing is, remember, we have filters, we have ways of augmenting our bodies these days. And so I think the reaction in society has been to, okay, we don't like this, so we're just going to promote what, what is you know, unhealthy as healthy. And that's not really the right reaction. So there's got to be a middle ground, okay, of like being fit, fitness, having good health, presenting with good health, having, you know, um, clear skin, having, you know, I dealt with acne when I was a kid, you know, everyone deals with different things at different times, but, you know, looking like a healthy person, okay? And that, that, isn't that doesn't change that's someone that presents well and it's not just physically it's internally how they um how they act you know how they think about things that is sound and grounded and these are based you know in in truth okay so um that's all i'll say about that all right so um, you want to have a holistic approach, all right? So overall, how's your soul doing? And I've talked about this before. How's your mind? You know, are you sleeping well? Are you staying hydrated? Are you not drinking too much alcohol? All these things factor in. You're not eating sweets a lot. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be like, oh my gosh, I'm thinking about so many things. But, you know, a healthy lifestyle is a healthy lifestyle, right? It's eating fruits and vegetables from the earth, it's moving our bodies and finding out what combination of those things we naturally vibe with or we naturally gravitate towards, okay? There's not one size fits all, okay? And uh, so I'll just talk a little bit about the keto diets. I'm not totally against the fasting diets. I feel like, you know, I, I honestly don't always eat breakfast because I feel like I'm not always hungry in the morning. I'll have my lemon water, maybe have some blueberries smoothie if, if I'm hungry, but that's just my flow. That's the way that I function well. Um, so I do kind of like fast in that time. Um, the ketogenic diet, however, without glucose, your body is going to use fat for energy. So it puts your body into ketosis, which long term is not healthy. Okay. There are studies being done that show that it's good for the brain that it's helping with Alzheimer's patients. Again, you can look all that stuff up. The National Institutes of Health has a lot of uh, studies going on currently and past research um, promoting the ketogenic diet. Um, but overall, it's showing that it's promoting um, high cholesterol. It's promoting heart disease, okay? So there's, again, no quick fix here. It's all about balance in within the healthy realm. So balance with having a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, not balance in having, you know, pizza and hot dogs and fruits and vegetables, okay? So balance within health and wellness, okay? Um, okay, going back to strength training, um, how hard should we be working? So we always want the last repetition for our set to feel difficult. So sets are going to be the periods of movement um, and then the rest intervals is going to be in between. So say I want to do three sets of, again, bicep curls, and I'm training for endurance, right? So the first set, I'm going to do 15 repetitions. How do I judge what weight I need? So on that 15th, since I'm training for endurance, that 15th rep, I want it to feel like it's challenging, right? I want to feel like I could have maybe done one more, but, you know, it's not to the point where I'm like dying with my face red and my veins are popping out because that's not what my goal is, okay? Then I'm going to take a little rest in between, do that again, take a little rest and do that again. Okay, three sets. All right, so pick a weight that is appropriate for you. For me, it's bicep curls usually. Um, I'll do 10, maybe 12 reps, okay? Um, and I'm just using myself as an example so you can get an idea, okay? Again, natural goals and interests. Dancing is an exercise. We have Pilates, we have bar classes. A lot of these studios offer free 
intro classes now. Okay, so um, I encourage you to just go out and try it. What 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 do you have to lose? You know, <laughs> you'll try something new. You might meet some new friends. Um, and it makes you feel really good about yourself. I, I haven't tried a bar class before. I took a ballet class in high in um, college. Excuse me, it was really fun. Um, but I'm looking into doing maybe some bar now because. I like the flexibility aspect of it and um i don't know it's just something new and it should be fun right it should be fun and you should look forward to whatever it is you're going after all right the last thing i'll talk to you about today is the metabolism okay so i've had a lot of people say oh should i increase my metabolism shouldn't that be the goal okay so there's a lot of research being done now about metabolism and longevity so this is very interesting so in theory, they're saying that when you increase your metabolism to such high rates, you're decreasing your longevity or your telomeres. Okay, so science is being done on this. Um, so the goal should be um, efficiency of metabolism. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So there's no magic formula. It's just calories in, calories out. We need energy to produce movement. All right, so our metabolism may speed up or slow down based on what we're eating, how much we're moving, so on and so forth. And then there is like the basic metabolism that we were born with, okay? Um, to give you an example, I've tested people um, on an RMR machine for metabolism and some obese individuals have presented with very high metabolisms and they're very surprised at this, like how is my metabolism so high? So imagine how many calories, so if you have someone who's maybe 5'8 and they're 300 pounds, okay, let's, let's say uh, 270, and they are burning um, 5,000 uh, calories a day, 4,000 calories a day, and they're like, wow, I have a, a fast metabolism, metabolism, that's great, right? Not necessarily. That shows me either you're eating way more than that because you are holding on to a lot of the extra calories, okay, and turning it into fat. So maybe that person's eating 20,000 calories a day, who knows? You know, also, um, it's putting a lot of uh, stress on your, your overall physiology. So metabolism is the rate at which all your physiological processes in your body take place. So you have the resting met metabolism, the RMR or the BMR, basal metabolic rate, so your cells, your brain, all these little activities that are happening in your body, beta oxidation, glycolysis, all these, um, these systems, um, a lot of it having to do with shuttling foodstuffs through the body, things that we eat, take energy, right? That's the rate of metabolism. So energy happening in the body is just the metabolism, okay? So we don't want to have necessarily a super high metabolism. I'll give you another example. If you ever watched, you know, Michael Phelps in the Olympics and stuff and heard about how many calories he's eating, right? He eats, he was eating so many calories, but it's because he was moving so much and he needed that fuel. If he wasn't moving as much and he was eating that amount of calories, it would be turned into probably fat, it would be converted into fat. All right, so calories in, calories out. I don't want you guys starving yourselves, eat when you're hungry. Um, and kind of get yourself into a routine, try to get lower calorie dense foods, uh, and just enjoy a plethora of fruits and vegetables, have a healthy mindset on what you want your health to look like, write it down, write down your goals, um, and then follow positive influences on social media, okay? This is getting into your brain, this is getting into your, your you know, your whole being of, you know, I should look, look like this, or I should be like this, you know, and even myself, you know, you see women that have plastic surgery and you look at yourself in the mirror and like as we get older, little things change and stuff and people will sometimes comment on things that they think that you should change. And, you know, that is, all that stuff doesn't really matter. As long as you are happy with yourself on the inside, your body is healthy, you know, you're not struggling with any chronic disease, metabolic syndrome, all those, you know, diabetes, all those types of things, and you're exercising, Okay, that's when it's okay to say, okay, I may not look like this, this and that, but I know that I'm doing everything for myself to be healthy and this is the person that I'm presenting to the world and, and you should feel good in your body, you should feel good in your skin, okay? So for some people, they may eat healthy, they may exercise um, and they may be a little bit heavier or they may be a little bit skinnier, okay? But that's not an excuse to go to one extreme or the other, right? Um, I think I talked about everything I wanted to talk to you um, guys with today, talk to you about today. Um, 
yeah, it's, it's just a lot of information. And, you know, the main thing is just um, stay away from the negative influences online. You know, everyone has a voice now. You can't just turn off the TV. It's it's just in our phones, on our phones, on our, on our computers. It's, it's always there. So stay positive. It's a little longer video today. Uh, just feeling passionate today. Um, thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. You can also follow me on social media. I am Raspberry Starfish. Um, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.